Shalom. I'm Eddie Chomney of Hebraic Heritage Ministries, and we welcome you to this week's Focus Israel Report. In this week's report, we're going to be sharing with you regarding the biblical festival of the Feast of Trumpets, commonly known as Rosh Hashanah, which means the head of the year, and biblically called Yom Teruah, which means the day of the loud shout or the day of the awakening blast. Many Christians view the biblical festivals as being Jewish feasts. However, this is not biblically accurate. In Leviticus chapter 23, in verses 1 and 2, it is written, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Notice that in Leviticus chapter 23, these are not called Jewish feasts, but the feasts of the Lord. But who is the Lord? In 1 Corinthians in chapter 12, in verse 3, it is written, No man can say that Jesus or Yeshua is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. Then in Philippians in chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, it is written, Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, or Yeshua, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ, or Yeshua HaMashiach, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so Jesus, or Yeshua, is Lord. And in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 1 and 2, it says that these are the festivals of the Lord. Furthermore, the God of Israel intended for his festivals to be celebrated by both Jew and non-Jew, as we can see in Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 14. And you shall rejoice in your feast, you and your son and your daughter, that's the native born, and it goes on to say, and the stranger. Now the word stranger in Hebrew is ger, and it means the non-Jew who seeks to follow the ways of the God of Israel. Why do the Jewish people refer to the Feast of Trumpets as Rosh Hashanah, or the head of the year, rather than the biblical name of Yom Teruah? It is because the rabbis see that the God of Israel created the heavens and the earth on the Feast of Trumpets, which is the seventh month in the biblical year and the first day of the month. As we can see from Leviticus in chapter 23 and verse 24, as it is written, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, ye shall have a Sabbath, a memorial, a blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. So on what basis do the rabbis see that the God of Israel created the heavens and the earth on the Feast of Trumpets or the seventh month of the year in the first day? It is because if we take the very first word of the Bible in Hebrew, Breshit, which is translated as in the beginning, and you rearrange the letters in Hebrew, it will say Aleph Batishrei, or the first of Tishrei, as the rabbis refer to the seventh month in the biblical year as the month of Tishrei. The rabbis see that the instrument used to make the loud shout or the awakening blast is the shofar, or the ram's horn. There are three basic sounds associated with the shofar, and they are a tikia, which is a short bass note ending abruptly, a terua, a long resonant blast, and a shavarim, which is a series of trills. So what is the spiritual meaning and significance to the blowing of the shofar? Rabbi Sa'adia Gaon of the 9th century explains that there are ten biblical reasons for the blowing of the shofar, and they are as follows. 
The first reason is because the Feast of Trumpets, or Rosh Hashanah, marks the beginning of the creation of the world, when the Holy One, blessed be He, created the world and reigned over it. In ancient Israel, it was customary, at the beginning of the reign of a newly crowned king, to sound the shofar to proclaim his ascent as sovereign king over his kingdom. The shofar was also blown to proclaim the anniversary of the beginning of the reign of a king over his kingdom. In like manner, on the Feast of Trumpets, or Rosh Hashanah, which means the head of the year, we proclaim and accept the kingship of our Creator, the God of Israel, who is the King of the universe. Therefore, the first reason is to proclaim the sovereignty of the God of Israel and to declare His kingship over all the earth. The second reason for blowing the shofar is the sound of the shofar is a warning to repent. The Feast of Trumpets, or Rosh Hashanah, or Yom Teruah, as it is practiced in Judaism, is the first of the ten days of repentance that concludes on Yom Kippur, or the Day of Atonement. And a shofar is sounded to proclaim and to warn. Whoever wishes to repent, he should repent. If not, he will have remorse later. This is the way of kings. First, they forewarn the people through decrees, and whoever sins has no complaint. Therefore, the second reason for the blowing the shofar is a warning to repent. The third reason for blowing the shofar is to remember to follow the Torah or the Word of God. And our obligations to follow the Torah or the Word of God, or as Jesus or Yeshua said in John chapter 14 verse 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. The fourth reason for the blowing the shofar is to hear the word and the prophetic warning of the prophets of Israel. In Ezekiel chapter 33 verses 1 through 7, it is written, Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people, and say unto them, When I bring a sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him for their watchman, if when he sees the sword come upon the land, he blows the shofar and warns the people. Then, whoever hears the sound of the shofar, and takes not warning, if the sword come, and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the shofar, and he took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that takes warning shall deliver his soul. But, if the watchman sees the sword come, and doesn't blow the shofar, and the people are not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set you a watchman unto the house of Israel, therefore you shall hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. The fifth reason for the blowing of the shofar is to pray for the rebuilding of the temple. When we hear the sound of the shofar, we are to pray to the God of Israel for the rebuilding of the temple, as it is said in Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 19 and 20. Because you have heard, O my soul, the sound of the shofar, we beseech you, O Lord, to rebuild the temple. The sixth reason for the blowing the shofar is to remind us of the binding of Isaac when Abraham was called by the God of Israel to offer his son Isaac upon the altar as a burnt offering. Spiritually, it would be a reminder to believers in Yeshua or Jesus as the Messiah to live our lives holy and as a living sacrifice unto him. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. The seventh reason for the blowing of the shofar is to have respect and reverence for the God of Israel. In Amos chapter 3 verse 6 it is written, Shall a shofar be blown in the city, and the people be not afraid? The eighth reason for the blowing of the shofar is to remember that the Feast of Trumpets is also thematically related to the Day of Judgment. In Judaism, the seventh month of the biblical year, called Tishrei, is associated with scales, or judgment. Furthermore, there are twelve months in the year, and there are twelve tribes of Israel. As a result, every month of the biblical year 
has its representative tribe of Israel. And the month of Tishrei, the seventh month of the biblical year, is the month of the tribe of Dan. In Hebrew, Dan is spelled with the Hebrew letters Dalet and Nun. These are the same two letters for the Hebrew word Din, which means judgment. Therefore, the seventh month of the biblical year in the tribe of Dan is associated with judgment. In preparation for the judgment of the God of Israel, as it says in Romans chapter 14 and verse 10, in 2 Corinthians in chapter 10 verse 5, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ or Messiah. Before we appear before him, we must make sure that we have repented of our sins and our sins are forgiven. So the shofar reminds us of the day of judgment and to repent before this day arise. In Zephaniah chapter 1 verses 14 through 16 it is written, The great day of the Lord is near and the mighty man will cry there bitterly. That day, the day of the Lord, is a day of wrath, of trouble, of distress, and it is a day of the trumpet, the shofar, and alarm against the fenced cities and against high towers, which represents pride. We don't want pride to be present in our lives as the day of judgment approaches. The ninth reason for the blowing the shofar is to remember the end of the exile of the 12 tribes of Israel. In Isaiah chapter 27 verse 13 it is written, And it will come to pass in that day that a great shofar will be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcasts in the land of Egypt, and they will worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. The tenth reason for the blowing of the shofar is to express faith in in the resurrection of the dead. In Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 it is written, Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. According to Jewish tradition, the resurrection of the dead will take place on the Feast of Trumpets, or Rosh Hashanah, or Yom Teruah. This is stated in the Talmud in Rosh Hashanah 16b. With this principle in mind, in the book, Festivals of the Jewish Year by Theodore Gaster, on page 113, he explains how the Feast of Trumpets is associated and is a symbol of the last trump. This being the case, the Apostle Paul associated the resurrection of the dead with the last trump. As it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 53. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the shofar shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So Paul associated the resurrection of the dead with the last trump, and in Hebraic thought, the last trump is a reference to the Feast of Trumpets, or Rosh Hashanah, or Yom Teruah, as the day is identified in Judaism as the last trump. A common greeting in Judaism when celebrating the Feast of Trumpets or Rosh Hashanah is, may you be inscribed in the Book of Life. May all of us be found in the Lamb's Book of Life. Well, that's going to conclude this week's report where we shared with you some insight regarding the biblical festival of the Feast of Trumpets, what the blowing of the shofar spiritually represents, and how it is associated with faith in in Yeshua or Jesus as the Messiah. Until we do it again, Shalom in Yeshua the Messiah. Amen.